Welcome to the Directing Animation Livecast with Scott Weiser. Just one week before episode 23, when I unleashed 10 feature film pitches into the world, I partnered with Space Station Animation as a director on exciting original projects. This will open up even more opportunities on this show to explore the art of directing animation and the pursuit of telling deeply meaningful stories. Today we were with Sean Boyles, one of my best friends and one of my favorite people to work with. He has so much experience. He's worked in video games, he's worked on films that haven't been released yet, and right now he's been working with us as the character designer at Space Station Animation, both on the Adley's Play Space app and for the Aid for Adley series that's on YouTube. So, welcome Sean. Go, ahead and, go ahead and explain what inspired this, this meeting today. Oh, okay. I thought you were maybe going to do that. Um, so... We were at CTN. Scott and I have done CTN for several years now, kind of met through a mutual friend there. And we were talking with the artists there. We were having a good old time. And one of them was talking to me kind of about my process. A friend said, hey, Sean, show him, show him what you do. And I just started drawing the way that I draw. Um, and I just started drawing characters. And I like to throw out a lot of ideas as I draw. It's called a shotgun approach by one of my pr producers oh, yeah, yeah. years ago, yeah. where I just shoot out a bunch of things to see what sticks and hits the target. Yeah. And Scott's jaw, his jaw hit the floor. He's like, <laughs> what is happening right now? And I was like, just drawing. He's like, we got to show that. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I just, as I just kind of generate ideas and was throwing things out there, Scott was like, we got to do this. So that's <laughs> why I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I really wanted you to be able to see this because to be able to draw design five characters at once it just I, I hadn't ever seen anything like that and it made sense to me because you know Sean will kind of disappear for a while when we're working together and all of a sudden like a couple hours later he just posts like 10 characters at once I'm like, what did you do all these you know so we're actually going to share the screen with you so that you can see him drawing on the iPad today and uh, yeah we're gonna let you you see him draw five characters at once um, he's actually going to be drawing different versions of the same character to start, and we're going to start to iterate as we go. Um, this is for the Unsingable Song. We have a, a set of fire spirits that we're going to start to design. We've done a little bit of design work on this before, but what you're seeing is actually going to be right from his head. We're not using any reference right now, and I uh, can't wait for you to see the process of how Sean draws five characters at once and how I direct and, and interact with those drawings. So let's go ahead and share your screen. There it is. There we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, so as I'm doing this, I, I'm a big believer in that first, like, 30 seconds, you know, that gesture drawing. So if I'm starting this fire spirit, I'm thinking, okay, you know, like, I'm thinking I'm drawing in the, am I I'm thinking this isn't working? Why is it not working? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> this is what happens in live cast. Sorry. Apple Pencil. Oh, there we go. Is it going to work now? There, there we go. go. How do I undo that? There we go. Okay. Two, two fingers. Okay. okay, so as I think that that first 30 seconds, if I can get something in that first 30 seconds, you know, just to shape down real quick, you know, and it's working in that first 30 seconds, it, you know, it, it'll be fine. You know, and I, these fire demons, I kind of imagine them almost as like walking matchsticks. So I want that that top of the matchstick and then something maybe thin down here, you know, the legs working like that. And it's like, okay, is that, eh, that's not bad. But then I'm thinking, oh, what if, you know, let's, let's have some more interest in the, the top of that head there or something like that, you know. It's kind of broken up. There's some embers kind of coming off of it real quick. Um, maybe we'll have more of just a torso here, a bit more, you know, fun with the legs type of thing. But I still want to keep maybe that thinness of the body and maybe even like the head is floating or something like that. And we put, you know, and I'll kind of come and do that as that as I have that idea. Then I'm thinking, oh, I want to play around with, you know, let's, what if these eyes are, you know, really big? If, I'm, if this is going to be black, what if the eyes are kind of big? And I'll kind of jump around from drawing to drawing a little bit and just kind of start getting those ideas out there. What if I have something a bit more... Oh, that's going to be way too big. <laughs> How do I... And as he draws for a second, I'll explain a little bit more for you. So Sean actually does most things not digital. He does most things with a pencil. Um, apparently a scripture marking pencil. He goes to the <laughs> Bible store and gets scripture marking pen pencils. But uh, yeah, he, he draws with pencil in a sketchbook and he'll get a sketchbook that's for you know, frogs, and then another sketchbook for witches, and another sketchbook for puppies, and another sketchbook for dinosaurs, and another sketchbook for fire spirits, wink, wink. And <laughs> um, so, yeah, and he, he just goes, and he, 
he starts to draw kind of fire spirits or frogs as he would usually draw them. And then he starts to push the shapes and really um, flex, you know, and, and push things in a way that he hadn't he hasn't done before. And it's one of the most inspiring things to go and, and find his frog sketchbook and like flip through and watch as he kind of explores these frogs. And a lot of them are interesting. And suddenly one will just catch my eye. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. And it's been the same as we've been designing characters for Space Station, for the Unsingable Song. We've been able to see all these amazing things happening. And oh, I really like this shape here, by the way. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, yeah. he's working good. Although the face is in the flame, right? And kind of the design motif we're, we're looking is like a, a block of wood inside of the so flame. So if we right? maybe... You know, instead, we'll we'll kind of take that same shape that was working. Yeah. Kind of block it off. Maybe there's even just chunks of it that are, that are you know, kind of popping off and stuff like that. So as I'm playing with these, you know, sometimes I'll have the shape. And I, I, I like the big, medium, and small. So if I've got this shape, maybe some big eyes, you know, that's there's my big shape. And maybe kind of a small mouth as, as you know, kind uh -huh. of that, that variety. If I have it, and like, if I put all the eyes, I don't want to put them just... Hey, I'm going to put the eyes in the middle. I'm going to put the mouth right there. I want to push that a little bit more. So let's put the eyes up at the top and let's have the mouth take up a bunch more space. Or maybe even have a bunch of space between the eyes and the mouth when we have it down here. That'll create a different feel, you know. And I just like to see what happens with those different shapes. And I need an eraser to get rid of some of these. But, you know, so that's kind of what I'm thinking as I'm doing these is, you know, just playing around with... Big, medium, and small in the outside silhouette shapes, but yeah. then interior as well. Like, how can I... <laughs> the negative space, that, that eraser, whatever. We'll just keep drawing over it. Um, but yeah, so that guy's kind of working right there. Um, I had kind of this, like, this body thing. And if I have kind of a smaller body, then he can have maybe these really long legs. That's oh, kind interesting. Of kind yeah. of a kind of Jack, Jack Skellington, Skellington type yeah. of thing, yeah. Which I noticed that in the designs you've shown me before for this, that you were kind of, you were vibing with this, this Jack Skellington thing. And I figured, you know, if they're made of fire, you know, like the, the you get those thin twigs or something like that, or again, that matchstick type of thing. But we could try something else, especially if they're little imps. You know, what if you have this, you know. I don't of think of these guys as imps, for sure. Oh. These guys are definitely, but it's fun to see, to see a design of them. Um, these guys are definitely kind of tall and intimidating, and oh. so Jack Skellington is actually a very good reference point for these guys. So then it'd be really so. cool to to maybe even push that even more. You know, you have that, you know, blocky shape. I like, you know, again, like big, medium, and small up in here. But then, yeah. what if you really, you know, yeah, really started to play with it a bit, you know, and just have these are these are tall, and so <laughs> suddenly that that gets a totally different feel than these, you know, funny little. Sleeping Beauty, you know, demon imp things that are hanging around Maleficent. Now you have a very different feel to it. You you make the eyes a bit smaller, kind of give him oh, interesting a feel of more, you know, that it suddenly doesn't feel like a little baby or something like that. Yeah, yeah. What if I kind of like that? What if you yeah. elongated this shape a little bit? Like that. Yeah. So you'll also notice that. Uh, um, I mean, depending on your level, um, these may look like really good drawings to you, or they may look like really bad drawings to you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay, like, um, Sean's warming up right now, right? We're going to get a new layer here, and we'll... Oh, I really like the shape on this guy, by the way. Um, we're going to get a new layer here, and he'll get to play a little bit more. Um, one thing I'm going to have you do is is do some more dancey type of poses. Ooh, and if I need to dance here in the other corner of the room, I'll dance for you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Because that's something else I'll do Maybe a lot of times the as I'm working. Maybe we can even turn the camera dance, but we yeah. can do that. <laughs> as, as I'm working, you know, sometimes you need like that, so you look up dance poses. You know, yeah. it's like, hey, I could get in front of a mirror and try and dance, but no, nobody wants that. And my moves aren't, <laughs> aren't necessarily going to be like the, the right moves or the right things, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That one's not that. By trying to kind of a suggestion of a rib cage. Oh, interesting. Coming in, something like that. Interesting. And the bony thing. Yeah. Is that too menacing looking all of a sudden? I I wouldn't at this point I'll say no. <laughs> alright, alright. Yeah, these these guys are pretty they're violent. And that's something that's like they're so violent that they're like, if there's no violence in the situation, they're gonna want to be violent, you know? He's even got so, some of that same thing kind of coming up here. Yeah. Um and again, this, this is, this is as I'm working on these, I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff out to Scott, and I'll send him 10 drawings or whatever it is, and he's going to be like, okay, one, 
you totally misunderstood this character. Or, hey, <laughs> this this really inspired this idea. Or, hey, we can kind of work with this and we can kind of... This is getting toward the thing. And that's really what it's all about, is getting those ideas out there so that the director or the art director, whoever it is you're working with, they've kind of got those ideas. And it's like, oh, you know what? I really like this triangle shape, but I want it to be tall. And I liked... And you can kind of just go around and kind of shop for the character you want. And that's kind of what... Uh, I'm going with there is just kind of to okay let's let's get those iterations out there so I can help him achieve what he was wanting you know yeah, just yeah, narrowing yeah. down that vision we have and it's always going to look like one of my drawings because I'm drawing it but you know given all those options and all those things out there if it's got you know kind of a almost a jack o' lantern type of mouth if it's going to be dark you know yeah 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 going to have some fun in there pull that out a little bit. As he, as he grins. So yeah, that's kind of the thought process as I'm, as I'm going through these. And you see, like, sometimes I'll start a sketch and be like, I just kind of leave it. It's... Yeah, you know, that, that's maybe good. Maybe it's like, eh, that one didn't work out. And that's okay. Like, as I'm drawing these, the whole purpose of getting out 10 sketches is some of them are going to be bad. Some are going to be awful and they're not going to work at all. And that's cool. That's great. Now I know that. Now I can move on to the stuff that is working. Yeah, yeah. None of them are precious. None of them are just... You know, they've got to be perfect every single time. That's that's just going to bog me down and kind of hinder some of the creativity that I'm going for and some of the speed and just that free flow. Ooh, I really feel. like that that triangle shape. That's nice. That's, that's some nice. really cool stuff there. Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder how that would kind of really sharp shoulders. and You know, and so some of these, again, like, you know, this isn't the full character. So as I take this, Scott's like, I'm liking that. Let's flesh it out. Yeah, Let's yeah. take it and see where it goes, you know. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to give you a break for a second. Okay. I wanted to come here into the iPad, and we'll go into, um, where are you? Secret files, where are you? Secret files. Yeah. I wanted to kind of show people this. This, uh... Oh, what, what we did before? What we're doing before, yeah. Nice. So, this is, let's see. Cancel. I'm here. I am grappling with the iPad here. Got the iPad. <laughs> um, we're gonna just scoot that over. Okay, now I'm gonna share the screen and just kind of show you. Um, yeah, we've got this very interesting thing going on here. These are these are the first versions of them, and um, my first critique is like I did feel a lot of Nightmare for Christmas vibe. I felt the menacing vibe. Um, it was really really cool, right? But these characters are meant to dance, and I don't see legs here, right? Yeah. So that was my first critique, and then. Um, we got really busy with, with the space station stuff, which takes priority, right? Because that's where we're working right we're now working. and our passion <laughs> project right now. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so this is, this is what I came up with after, um, a long time kind of trying to time, play yeah. with your kinds of shapes versus my kinds of shapes. I definitely wanted the, the fire to surround the entire body, right? Um, and then I wanted to feel this wood grain, like it's this burning sprite type of thing, yeah. right? And then the rest of the body's white. So that's kind of where we're sitting, sitting there for the design. And uh, yeah, now we can, now we can come back here. I'm actually going to take, um, oh, where's the, let's go back to your drawings. I'm going to take here and um, I'm going to, let's see. Where was that one that I really liked? This guy right here in the middle? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just looking at him backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the very center? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take him. I really still like this guy's proportions, though. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to actually select all this stuff. We're going to create a new page so you can just keep going. Just go with it. With your idea of um, doing two characters, or five characters once. So. Is there a way to kind of shrink those down? Yes, yes, there is. We're going to come here. Sorry. It's okay. There Whoop. we go. There we go. So now I've got him in there. Yep. And okay. we can raise up the so we can see more of your you know, screen. We kind of like those proportions. So you know, yeah. we put the head in there, and then we want the, you know, that long body thing, getting the really long legs. You know, it's like, in, and I can go in, and so I've got this nice curved line. Maybe that's not going to work for this guy if he's kind of sharper. Go in and just sharpen that up, and you know, things like that. I do like these kind of arms hanging out but let's get this head in there that we liked and a lot of times something one of my professors taught me was kind of the you know intuitive lines where you just you kind of let go you know and, and let it kind of flow and happen instead of trying to control each line I can go in later 
and really zoom in and then be like, okay, this line needs to be perfect. This line needs to be perfect. But at this stage, I'm really just letting the pencil go for a walk and just kind of letting it happen freely. Letting my arm kind of do what I've trained it to do and just let it kind of flow. Because you get those happy accidents. You get those nice natural lines that kind of look like nature made something here rather than me trying to control it so much. Um, which I have a, a hard time with sometimes where it's just like I'm over, over controlling it. Well, I had that, yeah, I had that situation where I was trying to like take your shapes and then retrofit them into my vision, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and, and it was, it was quite a struggle. I was fairly frustrated for. And I think you get like, hour. I mean, yeah. especially in like traditional 2D animation, I mean, you see like Glenn Keane, like he's letting that pencil go for a walk all over the page. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, just, yeah. He's letting it flow and you get those beautiful natural lines in that movement and then somebody else goes in and does the little the, the little cleanup. Clean up, it yeah. works great, you know, because he, he gets that energy that you want. Um, Scott had these nice eyes that were kind of big like this. and We can even start going in here and maybe, you know, like you can start... Oh, you can start messing with the page. That's what you're going to start doing. You yeah. know, you get some of that, you know, where the, the embers are kind of... The, the wood's kind of burning and, you know, some of those patterns that come with the with the burning of the wood type of thing. Yeah. And you, and is that, that's something that's going to happen as you detail it a bit more. You'll, you know, the tapering of the, the blackened wood, the burnt wood down to the, to the nothing there. Kind of got that. That's kind of a bit more triangle. What if we, what if we flare it out instead? What would that look like? You know, it's kind of almost bursting out of the top of him a bit. So we'll take that same shape there. Push those eyes down so that we can play with the the wood, those, those pieces coming up, you know, and try and varying up these shapes as well. You know, I don't want them all to be the same thickness, the same height. You wanna you want that natural kind of delineation of it, maybe pull one yeah. up here. Oh yeah, just one on the that's, side. That's looking more like Groot than than a fire. It does spirit, feel like maybe. Groot, yeah. Right. Well, and, and these <laughs> these spirits, I think I think the thing that's coming out as Groot is you have these really blocky, like square like shapes. And I imagine these vines kind of twisting a little bit because they're well, twisted, you know, they're let's twisted characters. Yeah. So what if I, okay, so let's, you know, kind of let's get some of this twisting and kind of, so make the, make the pencil start to twist, you know, kind of start drawing through it instead to get some of these shapes, you know, and so you maybe put a couple more curves into it like that. Put the eyes on here. You know, and so as I, if I start to kind of put those curves in to the oh, yeah. beginning. Oh my goodness, this is the this is the sketch that feels closest. All right, so see? far. So. And so as, yeah. as you start narrowing it down, it's like, oh, I want the vine feel. And so instead of focusing on that silhouette, you're focusing on the movement inside, and it creates this totally different shape and this totally different movement. Yeah. Kind of pulled his neck back a bit, which is kind of cool. Well, the beautiful thing about Procreate here is we can just take this. Woo! We can separate it because oh, something good. that happens when you draw on a paper <laughs> is sometimes one of your drawings starts impeding into it the other does. area, It does. Totally it right? does. So, and nice. then we can okay. just keep drawing, yeah. Keep going back. So I like that this net kind of pulled back and maybe he kind of, you know, hunched over a little bit. Give him that, that's kind of a menacing look there. That's kind of fun. That's cool. Thorns. I mean, he's still got to dance. He's still going to have to do that. I liked, I liked some of the embers popping up. We'll, we'll add that in there. But that, that shape right there. And so I, sometimes I go in and I'll strengthen some of the straights versus curves and, you know, some of the different things. But I like the movement going on there. And you can get that with the eyebrow. It can kind of match up with some of that. Yeah. Yeah. And this will change a lot as it's colored because there's a lot of darkness down here by the legs that it's actually going to be, you know, very different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're just blocking shapes right now, right? Yep. And just trying to... It's like, okay, this is the shape language that we're going for as we're narrowing it down. Yeah. One thing I notice about these is the posture. All the posture feels like he's kind of doofy or he's like hunching over. Um, I think that happens with tall... Top, you kind of, you, you, top people become like to... a little insecure with how tall they are. <laughs> and so they kind of try to make themselves shrink and end up with bad posture, right? <laughs> um, no, they come down to your level. Yeah, these, these guys are proud to be tall. So... Yeah. Um, so what if we take we're going to eventually need like more like proud posture rather so than like suddenly his head even you know that that same kind of shape that starts at this 
base here, but then we'll pull it oh, yeah, like, it like that. And then instead of that, that hunched shoulder look over here, you And got... try arms up like it's dancing too. All right. Do we need a new sheet of paper? Maybe in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, we've got the arms kind of coming up like this, which creates this, yeah. this nice flowing shape right here. Yeah, yeah that you know pull his eyes up maybe a bit more he's, he's kind of coming up he's looking up here we go that's looking cool yeah, i think we're ready for another page all right <laughs> i'll actually just bring this guy here because we know that this guy's the closest because i even like the shape of the head the best so far all so right. we're gonna come here Whoop. duplicate now again we we really you could tell the show's live right because we haven't uh this is all on the fly. We didn't really know how this was going to turn out, and kudos to Sean for like being willing <laughs> I'm to. Terrified of this. What if? What if it's one of those days where just nothing is happening, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. And something else I'm going to throw into the mix, which is important for an artist, is to use reference. So find visual um, images that that really spark your creativity. I I actually wasn't planning on showing. I have these books that you can only get on Kickstarter. Um, those who know Beautiful me for a long books. time. Oh yeah, how to think when you draw books. Um, people who've known me for a long time know that I've done several Kickstarters, might do another one. <laughs> I was hoping not to, but things have happened with my book that might change the, the flow of things. But um, these books are fantastic. I've drawn all the tutorials and oh, have you? Yeah, That's a fantastic. couple of them already. They're awesome. They're so, great. yeah, and two of them. So, um, yeah, I was going to show you thorns. Look at these thorns. Oh, those are just really cool. Oh, and the line just how the, the twisty things. these thorns are and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to. While you draw, I'm going to look up the, the trees. There are these epic, epic, gigantic trees that they have here in here. Oh, cool. A tutorial on that. So I'm going to look for that while you draw. Okay. So using that thorn shape. Now, do you want thing? this to be bigger, probably? There we go. That's there perfect. Go. Thank you. So we'll use kind of that shape. I kind of like what's going on here, that I've got this big space in the middle here, going down to this very thin space. That's kind of nice. I might pull this over so I can, you know, he's got his chest out. He's proud type of thing. So I'll pull that neck back there just a hair like that um, some of these you know just feel for some texture type of thing as we're talking about some of these tree things I was thinking maybe it's kind of cool you know if he comes down he's made of vines and stuff so maybe these his feet just flare out maybe just a hair to some to some root type of things again maybe is that starting to look too much like fruit I don't know but you know it's something to play with something to look at um, and there, hey there's nothing wrong with Groot or Ants from Lord of the Rings stuff like that so yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> so you got this nice gesture going on, you know, that 30 second, you know, type of thing where you can kind of, it's like, look, I can add some detail to this now, but I know that pose has some weight to it. I know it's got some movement to it that I kind of like going on there so I can already start to play with that and know it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So these are the... It was actually in volume three, apparently. Shame <laughs> I thought it was in volume knowing. four, but I got mi the mixed up because I... This is one of those that I've drawn every tutorial in. Um, and these are the gigantic trees. Look at those. Oh, those shapes. Look at those things. Aren't they glorious? Yeah, aren't they amazing? Look at the twistiness of that. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, and then there's this page after. So he'll do some that are just like an expansion pack is what he calls it. And then there's just like... Oh, very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's cool how he has all these trees like growing together. You can see these trees that just grow together like that. It's just amazing. Um, all of Lorenzo's tutorials are free online, by the way. <laughs> for aspiring artists who are like, I don't want to pay for the book. You can go look for the... It's good practice for any artist. I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah, I like to have it in a book because I'm mad about books. And uh, <laughs> and also, like, I want to be able to take this with me. And uh, at some point, just pull out this iPad and, and sketch a bunch of sketches. So, yeah. Something I like about, I mean, especially when you're drawing nature, is it's you, like you kind of almost want to avoid symmetry. You know, nature doesn't deal in in symmetry and things like that. It's it's really kind of playing around with shapes and stuff. So to such a great degree, and you can really yeah. get some fun stuff going on there. I'm really liking these eyebrows. How the eyebrows are like details on the branch. That's yeah, it's really just it kind cool. of knots in the wood. You know, the wood is yeah, kind of yeah. growing and stuff. It'd be nice to see like this his mouth really small up close to his eyes oh let's do that you know kind of pull it in here and just yeah and almost like he, so oh he yeah curves the really eye cool. as the as that cheek that that knot of wood kind of infringes there and yeah i 
I'm going to give Sean a brief break again <laughs> from drawing. Just, just because, you know, this way he can kind of just follow his bliss for a bit, right? Um, I really want to show people. So Sean and I tabled together at CTNX, like we mentioned at the beginning. And for the past several years, he's come out with these books that are called Shotgun Sketching. And I just want to show these wonderful sketches. I mean, look at that. That luchador. Luchador, is that what we call it? Luchador, yeah. Luchador. Oh. I lived for two years in Mexico. So yeah, I, and I, I was speaking luchadors, Spanish. Luchadors or Portuguese. <laughs> and uh, Day of the Dead, I draw a ton of that stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> there's a cave person. <laughs> oh. Apparently those are uh, not PC saying, nowadays. Yeah. But <laughs> um, Day of the Dead people, yeah. Really cool stuff. I love this operatic. Singer, it feels like something from How to Train oh, Your Dragon, right? It's totally Chuck Jones in What's Opera Doc. Have you seen that one? Oh yeah. Bugs Bunny rides down on that. But it still has that Nico Marley horse. influence. I, it's like still, it still, it still has my influences, but that was the yeah. other influence there, Chuck Jones and, and that stuff. Yeah, look at that sea witch. It's just amazing. I wish that were the one in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if yeah. Disney wants, they can... <laughs> they can just bring it in. <laughs> Lots of dragons, chameleons, different stuff. He's got tons of books like this. Goodness gracious. I Oh, I don't have the, the have la latest book, but that's okay. Oh, and also, I've got a custom sketch. Oh, look at that. Custom He's sketch. just that cool. <laughs> yeah. I love this custom sketch. I haven't <laughs> seen it for I've years. I haven't seen it in years. You just cats. Love those cats. Holy cow, this one right here is just so brilliantly amazing. And this one, this fluffy one, that's just... That was, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you'll see this very high variety of style. I really like this one, Sean. Oh, the, the Forest this, Ranger? Yeah, the Forest Ranger. He was nice. He, that's, a, that's a nice balance of shapes, the big, medium, small. Yeah. Stuff like that. that's oh, and then we talked about the dinosaur sketchbook. Uh, you're drawing lots of dinosaurs with uh, oh my gosh, so the much A for Adley on. stuff, yes. the new creative space. Oh, are we allowed to say that? Oh, some app that we're making. That's <laughs> the thing we're doing that I get to draw dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, awesome. there's some. <laughs> um, yeah. Really awesome stuff. I love all these skulls. Actually, people would come by our table at CTNX and say, hey, did you work on Coco? And he's like, no, I drew these before. I wish I'd worked on Coco, but it's okay. It's okay. You'll see some shapes here that I, I don't think I saw in Coco. I definitely oh, did definitely. not see that shape <laughs> in Coco. That's a lot more pushed. I, I pushed than... it a bit far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this one right here. I absolutely love it. We have... Oh, we have some kind of Dr. Seuss-esque type of things. I love this. I was teaching some students, and we had Giraffe kind of a Dr. Elk. Seuss day where it's like, hey, we're just going to have fun like Dr. Seuss did. And yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I totally, that was, the, that was the end goal. There's another cave person. <laughs> They're fun to draw. I don't know what's wrong with them. Yeah. Somebody will be able to tell you. Somebody, somebody who's somebody, offended somebody by something. <laughs> so, yeah. All these little, these are, I don't know if they're frog fairies. Uh, it's a it's an idea I had for a book called Fairy Frog Mother where okay, yeah. a frog prince or a frog fairy visits Cinderella and gives her this really nasty gown and <laughs> and, a, and a carriage made out it of it ruins you know, her life. It, well, it doesn't because then she goes to the I, I'm totally spoiling the book. I hope it gets made. Uh, she goes to the ball and she looks hideous and she looks awful. <laughs> but the prince loves her anyway because it's not about the gown or the the slippers or all that stuff. It's about who she is and he falls in love with her despite what the fairy frog mother did to her, not yeah. because of. Yeah. And, and I liked that idea. And then at the very end of the book, you actually show a, a regular fairy godmother giving a gown to a frog because they got mixed up in the in the line. And the yeah. frog's like, what am I going to do with all these frills or whatever it is? And just, you know, so the mix up, but it all turns out okay because of who we are. That yeah, was the yeah. idea. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, being willing to go to the ball looking like that, which right? is a lot about a person. <laughs> like, so like, hey! <laughs> I trust you, fairy frog mother. I'll do it. Hopefully this is the right approach. And he's like, who's that? She She's willing to come looking like that? She must have quite the personality. I don't know. <laughs> she is very sure of herself. Very, very sure yeah. of herself. So we're up against the edge here, huh? Yeah. Long. And that happens. There we go. Now I can give him some hands. Look at that. Look, let's give him some hands. Sorry, as we were talking, I, I went in. And so, like, you know, if you like a sketch, you know, like, you'll go in a bit more and really start to, you know... Throw in some of these details and a bit more of that. What's going on there, and you know, so this, this, you know, like with the with the tree thing, trying to open up, maybe you know, comes out and is branching out for some of these fingers and things like that. They're menacing characters, you know. You want to keep that sharp spider 
you know, feel to it. But maybe those hands aren't going to work. Maybe they need to be small. Maybe they need to be thin. You know, maybe it comes out and it's just very, you know, uh, the other mother from Coraline where it's just very spindly. You know, maybe that's better for this than a big fat hand, you know. so Yeah, I really like the spindly hands for sure. Let's do that. Oh, How do good. I grow my eraser? Or maybe, is that bigger? Is that bigger? It is. Yeah, big eraser. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Tech and, and Sean are not always the best of friends, so. Yeah. But pencils never fail. That's why I like them. Just sharpen it again. We'll do that. We'll go in. Kind of keep the sharp type of aspect to it. And again, for some of these things, you know, I've got a, I've got a mirror on my desk, and maybe you, you know, you sit there and you, you hold your hand out to kind of. It's like, okay, I, I, what would a hand look like like this? My wife, she works right next to me, uh, doing her, her her office thing, and sometimes like, dear, hold hold your hand out like like this, and you know, because you know, good reference. You want to you want to use that. You want to take it. So. You know, yeah. some of that instead. You know, so playing around with that. And that'll look really cool once you, you know, like if yeah. you full black in here and then you start getting those those white or yellow ember grooves coming in, that'll work real well coming in there. The, the glowing eyes and stuff like that will work real well. Yeah. I'm unsure about the about the feet again. Maybe, maybe they come yeah. to points. I like them kind of, even as they dance... They kind of create chaos because they're just poking holes wherever they go. Yeah, yeah. I think I think. Well, and when I drew them, I drew them kind of like the, this is Scott Weiser drawn here. <laughs> <laughs> this is now you're gonna see the quality go down, right? Um, no, um, let's say it was a really fat fire spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so like little points at the bottom, right? Like little little feet. So little yeah. feet, and they can even dance on their toes and kind of yeah. Bit. Yeah, but uh, for sure, tapering down. Definitely, we would want to not like go quite so far in at the waist, to right? A point there. Maybe more, and like right here, I'm digging this kind of thing where it's like, suddenly we're bringing that in, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, some Just good stuff. So if, it, you know, as Scott's drawing, this is, this is a lot of what, this is, this is day to day. This is it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'll send a drawing to Scott and he'll send me a video of a draw over or he'll just send me like, hey, I tweaked it a little bit and then I go in and yeah. make the changes and stuff like that. Uh, Color, color, something. I mean, I, I love working in red pencil and stuff like that. So Scott, like, he he really takes the color and just makes it sing, and it's awesome. And so that's what you want. You want to find a collaboration where you both trust each other and you're working together to just make the best product. And that that really it works well. I think. Yeah, it's yeah, great, absolutely. You know, instead of just narrowing down to exactly what I would do or exactly what Scott would do, you get both, and you come up with something that neither of you would ever do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's great. It's grand. That's that's why, you know, the animated films that look so gorgeous do because you have these people taking the best of everything they do in it and it works together. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is starting Look to hit him better. Than yeah. That. Oh, and if you get some beautiful, like, flowing fire shapes around him, kind of accentuate the movement. Yeah, that's yeah, gonna yeah. Be, that's going to be great. So we're going to shrink this down here and I'm going to let you draw those. <sighs> fire is definitely Ooh. one where you, like, Less control, the better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I heard a story from uh, Ryan Woodward. Okay, um, Sean's drawing again. Okay, <laughs> we're back to the Sean. Uh, Ryan Woodward, he he taught me at BYU, and he'd worked on Iron Giant, and he'd worked on, like, Osmosis Jones and stuff like that. And he was doing this explosion in Iron Giant, and it just wasn't it wasn't working. And he was like, what is happening here? And he went to his the person who was mentoring him, a guy named Michelle Guigné, who's a brilliant effects artist and one of my favorite artists. I think he's great. And Michelle Guigné just took two minutes and just whoosh, and let his hand just kind of flow and just like, whoosh, you know, instead of controlling it. And it was brilliant. It was great. And it was better than, than what I just did. I actually like those movements. <laughs> but like, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Like, the less yeah. I try to control it, you get like this, this movement and I can go in and kind of sharpen this shape back up yeah. here and kind of pull it in. But having those random shapes, yeah. you just let it flow and it, and it kind of works what's going on yeah you know? yeah absolutely instead of trying to control it you know so i want i know i want what yeah it's got this so definitely of... like something that i know for sure yeah you even just did it is less flames less flames toward the bottom right yeah and more toward the top which i know is the opposite of fire but uh but it's almost like he's creating this big yeah his yeah hands, you know he's yeah. unnatural he's not the right he's not normal fire right because in the story of the unsingable song you have regular fire but you have the fire spirits that um control fire and they 
you know, fire is their, their domain, but they are, you know, they're a little bit different than re- just regular fire. But I think, you, I mean, with these yeah. things, you have a chance to have this, you know, this big shape up here and to, it narrows down to a bit smaller here, tapers down to nothing. You have like this great movement variety of shape with the fire and it can highlight and accentuate his movement, you know, as he's, you know, and it flares up type of a thing. You want to draw again, don't you? I can see you're reaching for the pencil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to... Well, I, I just... We're getting to the point where we need to deliver what we promised, right? So we're going to create five versions of this guy. All right. Um, oops. Let's see. Duplicate! There we go. I'm going to create five versions of him. I'm going to hide that. Um, so yeah, five five versions of this guy where we're just... We're just trying out different shapes. We've got the kind of the idea of what he looks like and stuff. All right. But let's create variations of him. And I can dance around if you want. Oh, yeah. Let's see. What, what's so the I like I like these constant claw hands. Like, I think they would do kind of dances like that. Oh, All right. Like you got to hold a pose for a second. Okay. So <laughs> I saw, though, like something Scott was doing. He kind of, he was up like this. Not not a running man, but kind of, you yeah. know. So he had that. And he had this thing where, you know, like his head was kind of coming forward. But he had this arm coming back, you know, the, the yeah, foot yeah, was yeah. up like this. Maybe, you know, like... Okay, let's do one that's kind of up, like... Oh, wait, okay. Like that. So, again, and this is this is where, like, gesture drawing is going <laughs> to be really helpful, because, like... I wish everybody could see this pose I'm trying to hold. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you want to get that, that movement there and that weight... And the falling kind of almost forward. Because he, he can't hold that pose, and that's what's great about it is, yeah. you know, it's got that falling. Try the okay. leg forward on that one. Like the leg forward, forward, like kicking out? Yeah. Right. Let's kill that. So the leg, and then it kind of yeah. kicks out like that. Oh, it's, it almost needs to be higher. Like to, really, <laughs> to really, you know, like let's, you know, you get that movement. And then I would want to pull that a bit more. Yeah. Cool. And so yeah, these are these are the gesture drawings and stuff. Scott's gonna have to come in here and shrink them down because I'm taking up way too much space. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this lasso tool. So we take the lasso tool and go like this, right? And then we'll just shrink them down. Now there's room yeah. for some. See, so just Huzzah. lasso tool, then this tool. Oh, okay. And then that gives us. Huzzah! Yeah. All right, dance for me, Scott. Dance, monkey boy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is what Scott, like you know, Scott has a lot of animation. There you go. Kind of pose. <laughs> Scott has like a lot a of animation toe. background, so he would... <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, I want to pull this up. Kind of. Like... <laughs> He's reaching out. He's reaching back. Yeah, and I really love the claw hands. I think, like, the claw hands are kind of going to be the default. That, yeah, they're, that, that'll, that'll kind of highlight the menacing aspect of them. This would kind of be a cool pose, like, like something like this. Oh, okay. I'm gonna zoom in so I can. And that, up on the so that this, the post Scott's doing has this great triangle shape to it, and it's got this great, you know, oh the hands right up in here are great. You've got this hand coming up. He's he's he-manning it. He's he's calling on the powers of of Gray Skull. But you know the legs come out like this, and the head back here. Oh, that's that's nice. That's a good one. Okay, I got it. You're good. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and these are again like this is thirty <laughs> seconds, and maybe some of the. Proportions aren't what I would want, you know. I'd take the. Yeah, I was doing stuff like. Dun, 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 How do I? Where's Where's the lasso tool? Is this the lasso tool? <laughs> <laughs> now you've seen what most people don't see is how I shoot reference. It's very big and <laughs> got a lot of musical theater experience. So. <laughs> take the, yeah. How do I? How do I end? There we go. So you know this one here, the, that triangle pose. The legs aren't as long maybe as I would want them. So shrink that down. Oh, so you just made it bigger. Oh, that's yeah. that feels like rock star. I love that. Like, right, like there, now we're talking, you know, you yeah, get some yeah. fun movement going on in there. You probably want to move the, it out here, like the hand out here. So you have a bit Probably. Of like yours, yours was over kind of by your face. Yeah, that was done with my see. finger, by the way. <laughs> I was not holding the, the Apple pencil. <laughs> if I pull the nope, that's not how you do that. You want to rotate it? Yeah. The I'm green ro- dot rotates. Rotate. Oh, there we go. Look at you. Or you actually can just go, wait. <laughs> or you can't. Well, I thought you could do this. Do I, what if I grab the green? There you go. So then you kind of pull that. Yeah. Up just a bit. Yeah. And then. What happened? Oh, it undid it. <laughs> it undid I didn't. It. I didn't. 
You can just draw it. Just draw it. There we go. That's we're gonna do this old school. <laughs> Eraser and drawer, right? Yeah. <laughs> or erase a little pencil. So the head is in here, but we like that. Been coming in almost. That that arm is just pulled in tight to the chest here, and, and coming up in that claw. You want to accentuate. Yeah, kind of get the. That. And the head is obviously nothing close to even what we had there, but it was just a quick gesture to right, right. get him in there. You know. Yeah. Man, this eraser is kind of nice. Whenever I erase something in my sketchbook, it's still there. I know, I know. <laughs> this this eraser just completely disappears. But sometimes that's good. You kind of like to see that movement. I love those old Disney movies where you can see like the pencil lines. You know. Yeah. Those are, those are so great. Like in Winnie the Pooh, you can see kind of those through lines. And I kind yeah. Of that. That's working nice. That's doing something good. So something I like to do is you've got all these, you've got four, you've got five here, right? Uh-huh. So you've got uh, all these gestures, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. There's a there's an eraser tool that's called the spray paints. And you can come in here and just knock everything back. So it's like a faint line. Oh, man. Right? Oh, nice. Look at that. So now at this point... So now I can go in and draw over You can over come it. in here and start doing your, your deal of like, I'm, I'm going to emphasize things. We're living in the future. Yeah. Okay, so this one, Scott, it was kind of nice because he kind of hunched himself over just a bit. Yeah. As he was kind of doing this dance move thing here. This one to really give that motion there. Oh, now we're getting some real nice lines and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and I like this kind of counterbalance and stuff. That head would come up and create some nice shapes in here like this. Yeah, remember twisty vines, twisty vines. Twisty less, vines. Twisty less group, vines. more twisty. <laughs> and you come yeah. in here. Kind of twist around it like that. Had kind of this this Michael Jackson thing that face right in front. Of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That claw right in front of the face. I like these streets versus curves. Pull that. Oh yeah, nice claw. Yeah, there that's... it is. We wanted less of a less of a point at the waist to you know. We should give this one a really sophisticated facial expression. Like I'm amazing. <laughs> it's just. Or is he, you know, his eyes are just, he's in, he's in the moment, you know, he's so, <laughs> yes. he's like, oh, he's, he's feeling it. You've, you've disappeared as an audience to him. He's so in the moment that it's just beautiful and glorious. That's great. That's great. Coming in there like that. So you can start to see something going on yeah. there. He's kind of fun. Yeah, he is fun. I like this one here. Again, that that it was looking kind twisty, of out twisty vines. This way, twisty vines, twisty vines, twisty vines. Yeah. <laughs> but the the shape of the head was kind of he was looking up, had the chest coming out just a bit, but then arched in the back, and it was hard for him to hold. Yeah, <laughs> it was very hard for me to hold. <laughs> like stay still like, like that. I can't stay still like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that leg now is in the wrong spot. Yeah, what, what's really fun that I like to do is um, do dancing like that and then go and frame by frame it. Like as if I were animating, right? Going in there and saying, oh, because oh, you get some really cool. And you yeah. also feel a little bit more of the motion, right? So you know that this this um, force is going to move this way, right? So so I can draw this a little bit better, right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. whoa, 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 whoa. I think when you have video and you can pause it like on those, because some of those tweener frames, it's like, I can't hold that pose. Yeah, yeah. But in the moment, that pose is just glorious. Okay, we yeah. need to claw him. Yeah, I actually, so in college, I took a modern dance class. This is a very- Did you? That's uh, fantastic. Big tangent, yeah. And uh, the teacher, she's like, I look terrible in photos. Like when people take photos, she's like, but I'm a great, I'm great in motion. Mm-hmm. Like just, that's why people bring her in is because they love the the watcher dance, but they don't ever want to take pictures and like 
have a still pose on the dance. Yeah. And uh, that was fairly interesting to me. I wondered exactly what that was. Perhaps she just lacks the precision, or perhaps, like, she has a quality that the people who have precision don't have. So um, it's also a good idea to get re- reference from a variety of sources, right? Because every human body is a little bit different, and uh, we, all, uh, we all need each other to, like, inspire each other and to discover new things. Yeah. So let's go back to the drawing. This is looking really cool. Very cool. I love the flow. Yeah. Uh, that 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 aspect. Once it, you know you start saying something like viney, you know, and if you put that into the the character sheet or whatever it is, like you start to it, it informs how you're drawing and really helps shape that character. You know. Yeah. Like less blocky, more viney. Oh yeah, a little bit some vines uh, going around the arms. Yeah. I love that. Or even, you know, what if they, they make up the arm and there's a there's a negative space that I'm not gonna get. This one should have a very evil face on it. <laughs> so I think he is cackling in delight. <laughs> He's like, look at me dance. <laughs> but this is this is one where you feel like you have that, you know, like that wide ha ha ha, you know, like that. He's exultant, he is Oh, that's triumphant. his mouth, like his mouth is yeah, open. Oh just, nice. You like know. a little bit of tongue in there too, like just ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love him. That's so good. He is, yeah, he is he is he is glorying in what's going on here now. Watch me dance. <laughs> you know these these fire spirits, they don't have an audience very often. So <laughs> yeah, when you really get it, you take it. To dance for sure, yeah. You've been warming up for so long. <laughs> He's like, you've hidden me in the shadows for way too long. Come on, just let me shine. Big lines coming out Come on. Stuff like that. It's yeah, like it's these guys have been in prison or something. That's kind of their, their personality. Their personality like, have been in prison. They've been imprisoned by all the other elements. All the other elements are like, no, no, you fire, stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come out because you, you mess everything up. <laughs> uh, unless we need you. There are certain times, there, there times when fire is needed, but most of the time. Most of the time. Let's keep fire under wraps. Yeah, if fire came around as much as rain, we would not have anything. I would be in trouble. <laughs> you know, yeah. So. Uh, see, that might be like the, I'm trying to get that viney thing and it might have pulled off of the, the, you want some solidity, you need some strength to the, to the form. Yeah. That's not bad. It was actually fun this morning, uh. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Got up, did some working out, right? Came down. Sean is sleeping in our uh, toy room in the basement. And then my office is right next to that. So I snuck down into the office and typed through the climax of the Unsingable Song screenplay. Um, been working for a long time on that, just outlining, re outlining, re outlining, re outlining. And he knocked on the door right as I had just finished writing the climax. And it was a glorious experience. Beautiful really... things are happening in here, yeah. Sean. Beautiful things. You missed out. <laughs> you missed out on this one. I really, I really think it'd be fun if um, you see this neck, like down and oh yeah, so yeah. kind of those shoulders, yeah, yeah, oh, the musculature going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was me drawing again. <laughs> Scott, sometimes he did I'm... not do viney though. He's ignoring his own rules. Just I, kidding. I did, it was fine. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> I love it. It'd be cool if like there's vines within the chest too. Like they kind of wrap around. It's like. As if the muscle, yeah. And I think, yeah, if it mirrors that musculature a bit, that's that's really going to sell, you know. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to animate, because you would want that to... I think I feel almost need to... Now, I will give a little disclaimer. Um, I don't think this is quite capturing the magic of... What we saw at CTNX, but I think at CTNX you were drawing something that you've drawn so much. Uh, he asked you for know, dinosaurs, like, yeah, and he's, it was he's less like, like I've done a whole sketchbook of dinosaurs. I've drawn hundreds of dinosaurs, which fire spirits he's drawn maybe twenty. So also this still we, is we, impressive. We've already but... talked a bit about what you want with the fire spirits. So we're already coming into a bit further in the process than that initial just shape blast. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, there's still some exploration to be done, but we have a closer idea here than what we than just like. Hey, draw whatever, you know, and <laughs> any of those shapes come out. Anything goes. Love those legs. Yeah. Yeah, they almost disappear. Yeah. So we're, we're a bit Can't make a toy out of process. that. No. <laughs> That's one thing about animation is you're always thinking, like, how do you make the toy? You know? Make the toy. 
Oh yeah, gosh, and with a big bunch of fire, yeah, like a lot of money's in the toys, but a lot of it. Yeah, he needs a finger like sticking out, like up, like. Oh, there you go. Just one. Yeah. Coming out there like that. Yeah. How are we doing on time? What time? We're we're close to the end, but okay. No, so I'm just like, are we, are we okay? Are All we right, okay? so you and I had some conversations about uh, about screenwriting and stuff, and you, as you know, I. <laughs> I become very picky about films even films I love I try to kind of break down like well how could it be better how could it be better you know because that's the that's the journey is like how do you make a story that endures the test of time right mm-hmm. how do you make Aesop's fables where it's like you, he has hundreds of stories that have lasted for thousands of years and uh, he did that like really digging down to a high, high level of truth his stories are very lean so there's nothing in the story even though oh that would be fun if that would be fun if that would be fun if they, he cuts all of that out and really just gives you the bare bones of the story. And there, it's rare to find a story like that. I, I can only point to, like, Wizard of Oz, I think, is like that. Um, Tangled, I think, is pretty, pretty close. Well, it's hard because um, we've grown into a, the story that I'm seeing, and yeah. as I go to the movies, has to be 90 minutes. Yeah. And so it's like, Sleeping well, Beauty is one. You know, but sometimes it's like, is the, is the idea there, like, is that a, you know, sometimes they're like, well, gosh... If we do 60 minutes to yeah. pare it down to just that perfect nugget, yeah. audiences are going to be like, I paid 10 bucks for my seat and you, you only gave me an hour. Like sometimes they feel maybe they need it like, yeah. to hit that exact parameter. That's yeah. you thinking out loud. That's you thinking out loud, yeah. And I can see that. I can see that. But I think there's ways to have fun telling the story. And you, you can, can go back to Hitchcock too. Like you can, you can tell he loved making his films. But when he talks about his films... He doesn't talk like, I'm going to make the biggest spectacle you've ever seen, and it's going to be a blah, 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 complex, 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 complex. He actually, um, he criticized one of his actors. Was it Catherine O'Hara? No, I can't remember. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara is a, a more... Yeah, she's... Maybe Catherine Hepburn. I can't remember, but there was an actress he worked with who was always looking for the b- next big role. Like, I want I want a, a, each role to get bigger and better and more grand and more amazing, you know? And, and he's like, ah, oh, that's just the worst way of thinking. He's like, I... I think of every film as this little novella, like this little That's this funny. little picture I'm doing called Psycho. You know, this little picture yeah, this I'm doing called The thing. Rear Window, right? Um, but when so the story is like really, really solid and like bare bones. Once he's got to that point, he really feels like that. That actually inspires everything else. So everything is more fun to make because that little nugget is uh, is amazing. That's um, really funny to talk about nowadays, where everything <laughs> has to be. Massive and huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's what's the next big thing? What's it? It's never the, the yeah. Small thing. That's what well, I've mean. been thinking. I've been thinking of um, Unsingable Song as an intimate drama that's going to have some pretty big special effect moments, but most of it's really intimate drama, and uh, I think that's hopefully the right approach for this story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we're already kind of going around. This is the get wiser moment that uh, we always discuss. Like. Ah. If my goal is to get the highest concentration of truth into a story, what approach would you recommend? And we've already been discussing it. Is there anything else you would add, like highest level of truth? Like, there are stories you enjoy, but what's a story that you like? You feel like has changed your life? Like, it, it really motivated you to want to change things, and you kind of constantly remind yourself of this story. Like, what's that story that's constantly, like, inspiring you to become a better person, like, into survive like to flourish i don't know if it's a, if it's a specific movie or something like that. there's a moment in a movie that, that came to mind all of a sudden yeah um so it's a, mo- a movie called the rookie you seen oh, that yeah, yeah. uh dennis quaid and yeah. he, he's a he's an old coach yeah who had a shot at the big leagues playing baseball and then he kind of takes another shot and at yeah. one point he's kind of in the minor leagues he's kind of in the drudges and he's every day doing this thing and he's kind of not feeling it and he goes and he watches these little kids play baseball <laughs> and he's just, and he sees the love in their faces. And he goes in the next day and he talks to his friends, like, you know what we get to do today? We get to play baseball. And he has a big smile on his face because he found that love again. Yeah. You know, and it's like. He went back to the basics. He did. He went to those basics and things like that. And so there are times when I'm drawing and it's like, look, you know, and, I, and you put in your, your hours each day and stuff like that. And it's a job. It is. Yeah. And there are times when you can just be like, okay, I'm just going to, I got to do this. And then there are times you pull back. You know what I get to do today? I get to draw pictures. You know, there are times when it's just, it is magical again, yeah. and it is amazing. And and I, so that that's when I go it's to... It's like a sense of me. gratitude. 
It is. Gratitude it's just, for the very simple essence of something. Or to, to, to find that love of everybody again. And yeah, to just that simple gratitude. Oh my gosh, I get to do this. Yeah. And, and you know, it's easy to get bogged down with all the things in the world and stuff like that. So to go simple, just find that love. That's, that's a moment yeah. for me as an artist. I don't know if that's like, you know, for everybody, but for me, I watch that movie and I'm like every the next morning, every time I watch. I the think movie. I think that can resonate with everybody, especially because you know, I mean, I I I always kind of bristle when we bring up the pandemic because we bring it up over and over and again. <laughs> but um, let's not bring up pandemic. Let's just say everybody's going through hard stuff. Like you meet somebody on the street, if you treat them like they are either going into a tra- uh, like a tragedy, coming out of a tragedy, or in a tragedy, you're going to be right ninety percent of the time, right? Maybe more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Life is hard. Life is hard, right? So survival information, like in Aesop's Fables, is really what made those stories last. Like people are telling them stories, and they're like, "Oh, you're really struggling." Oh yeah, you're 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 sad that your friends are making it faster than you. Tortoise in the hare, tortoise in the hare, slow and steady wins the race. That's really the key to being successful long term, right? And then they'll tell that story of the tortoise and the hare. And every every uh, motivational speaker ever has given a story about the tortoise and the hare. You know, yeah. has they at least used it once with somebody, you know, some, to somewhere. motivate somebody, right? And then they did the same thing with Dennis Quaid. They gave you a piece of survival information. They're like, this guy has a lot of pressure. He's making a feature film. He's in the big leagues. He's um, building a huge company. He's like doing these things, like these grand dreams. He's 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 doing what's supposed to be. Like he envisioned his whole life is going to be this grand thing, and he's like, I'm hating this. Like I'm struggling with this. How do I survive this? How do I get through this? And then he goes back to the basics, like to when he was a kid playing baseball, and he goes and washes like the pure joy that they have because the, all that pressure. They're not worried about all that pressure. They're just enjoying baseball. And that's the survival information he needs to pick up and, and get to that next level. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I think that resonates. Yeah, it's Hopefully yeah. everybody. I know. Hopefully. I've heard so many people say they love The Rookie. You know? That's one of those films. It is a classic. It is a classic. And people keep coming back to it. And uh, we referenced Coco last night. You know, oh, that's, that's a movie that gosh. families are going to be watching every year for years to come. Um, hopefully a century to come. You know, people will be watching that every year to remind themselves of, you know, the importance of family and how what's what's um, the most important thing yeah. yeah what's the most important thing and and some i i like that story because you have that character who it seems like he abandoned his family but he he died on the way to back to his family you know um so yeah it's it's and really, everything goes back to reinforce that point yeah that story is very um, lean it, you know yeah, yeah you, know, you, you have this there. character this character this character you know the bad guy yeah he was bad because he ignored that he ignored the most important thing, the family and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he, he was, was all about the grand dream. He was. Give up yeah. everything. Give yeah. up your family for the You know, whereas it's like, no, that makes everything better. That makes life or better. Or give up playing the baseball as a kid. Like, say, oh, kids, they're dumb. I don't I don't need to be inspired by kids, you know? Yeah. And, and you lose sight. Like, you're so focused because you're so intently, like, maybe you're fearful of losing everything. I don't know. But you get so focused that you don't see anything else in the, in the grand scheme of things. And, uh, yeah. Powerful, powerful information. So, mm. powerful stories. And and again, in Coco, you know, you have, I think of one of the most fun parts of Coco is the Coco, Poco Loco song, right? You're singing Poco Loco. But what's that song actually about? That song's actually about this boy who really hasn't gotten to perform before. He's really nervous. Starts performing. And then he actually gets to... Ex- he gets to dance with his, uh, his grandfather. Yeah. He doesn't even realize he's dancing with his grandfather, but it creates this bond between them, right? And so everything in this story is actually very lean. There wasn't a lot of extra stuff, even though it was fun stuff. Um, it doesn't, you know, play is play is a place to learn. Like mm-hmm. that's how kids learn is to play. So yeah, cool discussion. Nice. Ah, I'm glad we had that discussion. That's cool. That and cool. Uh, thanks a bunch for designing these characters. Let's we'll give them one last little screenshot of that. Uh, yeah. So we have we have a couple more. We we actually did a lot more than we promised. Honestly, <laughs> I think we did like about three or four 20. pages. Yeah. Well, like... we, we're going through iterations. We were starting to discover. Um, who this character is and, and trying to figure out, you know, which shapes work for him. So mm-hmm. I think it was worth the, worth the discussion. So yeah. Thank you so much Not for being on here. Thanks. Um, people can, well, you can find him anywhere that is spike the surf dog. So much. spike the surf dog on Instagram, spike the surf dog on Twitter, yeah, blogspot.com, spike the surf dog. Mostly Instagram now, but yeah. yeah. I think it's, that's all is this spike the surf dog right here? Is that, that was the idea. Yes. <laughs> The pug dog has become the unofficial mascot of... Awesome. (laughs) He's the surf dog. Well, great. So great to have you here, Sean. Thank you. I'm so happy I get to work with you all the time. It's fun. It was fun. We've been wanting to for years. And the last couple months, it's like, 
We can work together, so it's been yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been brilliant. So, until next time, I hope we all get a little wiser. Thank you for watching the Directing Animation Livecast, hosted by Scott Weiser. Audio version edited by Kira Horowitz. Copyright Scott Weiser, LLC, 2021.